Okay, let's get started. So what I thought we could do today was we could focus on a little bit of sequences and series. So the first question that I'm going to do with you guys is a little bit easier. And after that, I'm going to do something that's a little bit more difficult. Okay. Um, but I'm still trying to sort of keep things a little bit chilled because it is the holidays after all. But anyway, here we go. Okay. So um, hopefully you've got a, a formula sheet in front of you. If you don't, I can always write the formula down, but I think it really does help if you've got a formula sheet in front of you, as well as your calculator and a pen or whatever else. Okay, so first question in 3.1 asks us to consider the following number pattern. So they give us minus 8, minus 7, 0, and then 13. The first thing they want us to do is write down the next term in the pattern. So we would have to look at that quite carefully and decide what it is that's actually going on in this particular pattern to give us these sorts of numbers. Okay, so if we were having a look at this, what would we say? What sort of pattern is this? I mean, if we look at the next question, I guess question 3.1.2 kind of gives it away completely, but what sort of number pattern is this? Okay, is it's, a a it's a quadratic pattern, quite right. Okay, so it's a quadratic pattern. So when we look at this, we can see straight away that it is a quadratic number pattern. And they didn't tell us that, but that's okay. It is a quadratic number pattern. And what do we know about quadratic number patterns? What do they always do? What's the same with every single quadratic number pattern? A few things, actually. What can you guys think of? What's the same with all quadratic number patterns? Yes, can you see they go for it, my girl? Um, and they have two um, differences. They have two differences. Keep going, can you see that you were correct? The second difference is constant. Ah, oh, lovely, can you see that? Okay, and what can we say about the first difference? Okay, so your, your first difference is calculated by saying term two minus term one. So what would the first term of the first difference is a pattern on its own? What sort of pattern can you see there? Ayobakwe, do you know what sort of pattern is your first differences of a quadratic pattern? Aha, all right, quite right. So your first differences are always linear, okay, or arithmetic. So we would work that out by saying minus seven minus negative eight. So what would the first term of our first difference be? What's the first term of our first difference in this case? 100% can you see that it would be one. Okay, and can you see if you got that by saying minus seven minus negative eight. Okay, so minus seven plus eight, and that's where she ended up with the one. Okay, then we're gonna work out the sec correct Kaza. Okay, so Kaza, what's the second term of our first difference? Good, it's gonna be seven. All right, and the next term, the third term of our first difference is going to be what? 13, yes, 100%, lovely. Okay, guys, it's going to be 13. Okay, so these are our first differences. Okay, and very important, they are linear. Our second differences, how do we get our second differences, Matrix? Yes, Imanati, quite right, 13. So how are we going to get our second differences? What are we going to do here? 
And you see this is six. Where did she get the six from? Where does can you see get the six from, guys? Exactly. Okay, so it's the second term of our first difference minus the first term of our first difference. So seven minus one, that gives us six. There we go, quite right, Emma, now two we subtracting our second differences. Now, and again here, we would end up with 13 minus seven. Okay, and that would give us six. And now we are happy we are working with a quadratic pattern. Okay, because our second differences are constant and our first differences are linear. Okay, so our second differences, whoopsie, sorry guys. So our second differences are constant. Okay, and now we know this is a quadratic pattern for sure. Okay, so the first thing that they want us to do is they want us to write down the next term pattern. All right, so how are we going to figure out what that is? How are we going to work out what the next term in the pattern is? Okay, so where did you get the 32 from? Can you see there? How did you know that it needed to be 32? Okay, so 13 at six, do we work backwards? Okay, so Emanati, what's happening here is that each time we are adding, what we are adding gets bigger by six. So in other words, the first time we added one, the second time we added seven. So one got bigger by six. The second time that we, we added six, we added in the form of 13 because seven got bigger by six as well. Okay, so it's the same idea here. What we would have to do in order to be able to work out what the next term in the pattern is going to be, all right, is we would then have to make sure that our first difference got bigger by six. All right, so 13 gets bigger by six and then we add that to 13. So quite right, we would end up with term five in our linear pattern being equal to 32. So term five is equal to 32. Does that make sense, everyone? Oh, wow, Kulani's already done that. Wow, Kulani, well done. All right, that's great. Okay, so term five would be 32. Emanati, does it make sense to you how we got to that answer? You're supposed to. You're supposed to, Kaiser. You're supposed to write T5 equals 32. But if you just wrote uh, 32, you would also get all the marks. Okay, so no problem with that. All right, so the next term in the pattern, term five, it's equal to 32, and we would get two marks for that, which is nice for us. Okay, now they say show that. Right, so very important, the words show that mean what? What does show that mean? It means you're required to? Prove, quite right, you are required to prove, okay? Not verify, okay? So verifying, would be taking one and subbing it in and getting negative eight and taking two and subbing it in and getting negative, negative seven and subbing three in and getting zero. That would be verifying, okay? So they do not want you to verify. They want you to prove. So that means that we need to pretend that we do not know that this is the answer. We pretend we do not know that that is the answer and we work it out for ourselves, okay? So the first step, is working out that this number in front of the n squared is three, and then working out that the number in front of the n is minus eight, and then the last step is working out that the last term is equal to negative three. What rules do we need to use in this case? There are rules that we've been given that we would use. There we go. Okay, so can you see there? 
the first rule that we use is 2a, okay, and 2a is always equal to our first difference. So this guy over here, that's always going to be 2a. All right, so we would say that 2a is equal to 6, and therefore a is equal to 3. Lovely, that's our first rule. What's our next rule? What's our next rule, guys? Okay, so can you see Liz on it? So our next rule is 3a plus b, and that's got to be equal to the first term of our first difference. Okay, so 3a plus b is equal to 1. Okay, 3a plus b is equal to 1. And we can't solve for two unknowns in an equation, which is nice now because we know what a is equal to. So this is what Kanisida was putting in the chat. She was saying, let's uh, sub in a is equal to 3 plus b is equal to 1. And that means that b would be equal to 1 minus 9, which is where our negative 8 would come from. Okay, well done, can you see that you're working so hard at your maths, you're doing so well. How are we going to work out that c is equal to negative 3? What rule do we use here, matrix? That's it, can you see there? Okay, A plus B plus C. All right, so this one up here, our first term of our quadratic pattern, that's it, Imanati, beautifully put. A plus B plus C equals term one of our quadratic pattern. Fantastic. Okay, so A plus B plus C, let's get that down. A plus B plus C equals term one of our quadratic pattern. Okay, good stuff. So A is three, B is, oopsie Daisy, sorry, I made a mistake. I didn't mean to write the bracket first. So three plus negative eight plus c is equal to term one of our quadratic pattern, which is negative eight in this case. Okay, so now we can solve for c. c is gonna be equal to add eight, add eight, take the three over to the other side. So c would be equal to what in this case? C would be equal to what do you guys get? Five. Just double check that Imanati. Can you see that that's the right answer? Okay, so Imanati, if we were taking all these other terms, so we're going to take this term over here, the 3, and we're going to take the negative 8 over to the other side, okay? Yes, k's are quite right. So we're going to end up with c equals, there's our negative 8, then it would be plus 8, then it would be minus 3. Whoopsie daisy, I'm just going to move a little bit over to the left-hand side here. Okay, Imanati. So c would be equal to negative three. Okay, good job. <laughs> all right, and now we can put it all together. So tn equals an squared plus bn plus c for all quadratic number patterns. a is equal to three, so that's three n squared. b we worked out was negative eight, so negative eight n, and then c in this case was minus three. Okay, so there we've done it. We've proved that the nth term of the pattern is tn equals three n squared minus eight n minus three. Okay, we did not verify, we proved it.
Okay, that's okay, Aminati. That's why we're all here. Okay, good stuff. Right, so very important matrix. Um, I just want to reiterate that again. When they ask you to show or prove, you cannot use what they have given you and then and then verify that it's true by working backwards. All right, they want you to pretend as though you don't know that that's what the answers are and then use the rules or whatever it is to be able to establish the things that they have given you. Okay, uh, if you don't do that, then you're not going to get any of the marks at all, which you obviously don't want. Okay, next question. Between which two terms of the pattern will the first difference be 79? Show all working. Okay, so between which two terms of the pattern will the first difference be 79? What are they asking us for? What are they giving us and what are they telling us to do? How can we put this into words? What do they want from us? Hmm, they've given us a first difference, quite right. So the value of the first difference that they've given us, can you see there's what? It's the value of the first difference they gave us. Hmm, <clears throat> I agree, it's 79. Okay, so in other words, they are saying to us that somewhere in this pattern, one of the first differences, somewhere way down on the right-hand side down here, this number is equal to 79, and it lies between two terms in the quadratic pattern. Exactly. And they want us to, to determine between which two terms that is. All right. So what I want to point out to you guys, all right, is that look here. Okay, this is really, really important. This is term one of the quadratic pattern. This is term two of the quadratic pattern. Term one of the linear pattern of the first differences lies between term one and term two. Between term two and term three of the quadratic pattern, that is where term two of the linear pattern lies. And then similarly, between term three and term four of our quadratic pattern, that is where term three of our first differences is situated. So our first differences are always situated between the same term on the left and one bigger on the right. So term one of our first differences is between term one and term two of our quadratic pattern. Term two of our first differences is between term two and term three of our quadratic pattern. Very, very important. Okay, so Imanati, what did I, what did you miss? What do you want me to explain again exactly? Is this the where term one and term two are situated? Okay, so Imanati, let me say this again for you. Okay, so let me just rub this out. Okay, so Imanati, in the first line here, okay, our first line, this is our quadratic pattern. Okay, in our second line over here, these are our first differences. And in our third line over here, these are our second differences. So term number one of our quadratic pattern and term number two of our quadratic pattern are these two over here. Term one of our first differences lies between term one and term two of the quadratic pattern. And term two of your first differences 
lies between term two and term three of your quadratic pattern. And term three of your first differences lies between term three and term four of your quadratic pattern. So when they say to us between which two terms of the pattern, they mean when they say of the pattern, they are referring to the original quadratic pattern. Between which two terms of the original quadratic pattern will the first differences be 79? So they are saying to us somewhere way down here, if we take term n plus one and we minus term n, we're gonna get a difference of 79. Right, so we need to find out between which two terms that is going to happen, okay? And luckily for us, all right, if it's term five, then it's between term five and term six of the quadratic pattern. If it's term 3000, then it's term, between term 3000 and 3001 of our quadratic pattern. Okay, that's what they are referring to. So between which two terms of the pattern will the first difference be 79? First difference is linear. Okay, so how do we describe a linear pattern? What do we do? How do we describe a linear pattern? And what does the 79 represent in this linear pattern? Can anybody tell us? What do you guys think? There we go, Bojipo, yay, well done. A plus N minus one D, quite right. Yes, it does, Keza, it does form a straight line. You're quite right, it does form a straight line. Okay, so the pattern Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. That describes our first differences because they are linear. So if they say to us between which two terms, what letter are they implying we need to solve for? What data? Do they want A? Do they want N? Do they want T? Do they want D? What do they want? Between which two terms? What does that mean? Yeah, exactly. Okay, they want N. Okay, boy, chair, Paul. They want N. Between which two terms? Okay, so between which two terms means which value is <laughs> okay? Just say sorry. Okay, they mean they want the n value between which two terms. Okay. So remember, a represents our. What does a represent, Bochepo? A is our. That's it. Booyah, <laughs> our first term, quite right, term number one. And what does D represent? Our difference, exactly. Okay, quite right. So because this is an equation, so Tn equals A plus N minus 1D, that's an equation with four different variables, okay? So Tn is a variable, A is a variable, N is a variable, and D is a variable. So if they want us to solve for one of them, in this case N, it means we need to know what the other three are. So we need to know Tn, we need to know A, we need to know D if we want to work out what N is. Quite right. Okay, so <clears throat> in this case, what is Tn equal to? What is Tn? Tn is? Seventy-nine, lovely, great stuff. Okay, N, we don't know. That's what they want from us. 
What is A equal to? Let me just move this up just a little bit. What's A equal to matrix? A is equal to negative eight. No, no, A is not equal to negative eight. A is equal to, remember we're working with our first differences. Yes, we are working with the linear pattern, quite right. So A is equal to one, good, yes. Okay, we're working with our first differences. A is equal to one. What is D equal to, matrix? It's okay, Minati. Yes, there we go. Okay, D is equal to six, good. Okay, Ooh. Hang on a second, sorry, I have my pen. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, so now we can say that, yes, 79. So TN, let's just grab this over here. So TN equals A plus N minus 1D, where TN is 79. A the first term of our first differences is one plus n minus one, and d in this case was equal to six. Our constant difference was six. Okay, so you guys solve what n is equal to. At least we're now just gonna hang tight. And you guys solve what n is equal to. There we go. Can we see it? Good job. Okay, let's see what everybody else gets. Yeah, quite right. Kulani. Yes, good job. Okay, so that's what you should be getting. So here you would have said that 79 is equal to 1 plus 6n minus 6. You would have left the 6 in the one side. You would have taken the 1 and the minus 6 over to the other side. That would have given you 84. So n should be equal to 14 is the right answer. Good, lovely, well done, Matrix, that's great. Okay, so in other words, let's just go back and have a look at our equation. Between which two terms of the pattern will the first difference be 79? It will be between term 14 and term 16, 15, sorry. So between term 14, and term 15. Okay, now we have answered the question. Good, everybody happy with that? How are you feeling? You want to give us an emoji? How do you guys feel? All right. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's awesome. So nice to see those smiley faces. Yay. <laughs> cool, Imanati. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. So now 3.2, the following arithmetic sequence is given. They told us that it's arithmetic. <laughs> Me too, Nelise, but I also love them shades. <laughs> so the following arithmetic sequence is given. So 20, 23, 26, 29, da, 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 all up to 101. Calculate the number of terms in the sequence. How are we going to do that? How are we going to calculate the number of terms in the sequence? And what formula do we use? Very important. What formula do we use? How would we calculate the number of terms in the sequence? What do you guys think? Uh, 
Okay, so the sum for me, Kinesi Lizzie's Bocepos's arithmetic series formula. Why? Why are we using a series formula? What is it? What does a series formula mean to us exactly? When we're talking about an arithmetic sequence as opposed to an arithmetic series, what's the difference between the two? Is it the same thing? Are they different? What do you guys think? Okay, so Tahir says TN sequence formula. I'm finding that yes, absolutely. So Imanati, Bojepo, I agree with you guys. Okay, they're not asking us to add the terms together. Right. When they ask us to add the terms together, that's exactly so here. See, series is a sum. Sequence has quite right. OK, so they're not asking us to add 20 to 23 to 26 to 29 to 100, little love, whatever, yet. Not asking us to do that. They're just asking us to work out the number of terms in the sequence. So this is a straightforward um, term formula application, All right? So 3.2.1. OK, well, we suppose we can rub that one out. Three point two point one. Okay, they're so asking us to calculate the number of terms in the sequence. What letter are they asking us to solve for? What letter do they want from us? So we're quite right, we're using Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. What letter are they asking us to solve for? For N, yeah, quite right. The number of terms in the sequence. So what does 101 represent? 101 represents what? Yeah, it represents Tn, the, the nth term of the pattern. So 101 is going to go over here. What is A? A is equal to? Twenty, quite right. Okay, so A is equal to 20 plus N minus 1. N is all we're trying to calculate. What's the difference? D is equal to what in this case? <laughs> it's equal to three. Lovely. Okay, always put D in brackets. Okay, especially if it's negative, because then you've got to remember to multiply it into the brackets and not subtract it from the brackets. Okay, which is a fairly common mistake. Okay, so we have got 101 equals 20 plus 3n minus 3. So we're going to leave 3n one side. We're going to take our numbers over to the other side. What are we going to end up with on the other side? So we're going to take away 20 and add 3. We would get how much? Okay, so yes, Mr. Bavuma, that's off. No, can you see there? 28, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 84. Okay, so 101 minus 20 plus 3 would be 84. So N would be equal to 28. Okay, so therefore what this means for us is that there are 28 terms in the sequence. Okay, 28 numbers in our particular pattern. Okay. <clears throat> Good stuff. Well done, everyone. Now they say to us, if the odd numbers are removed from the sequence, calculate the sum of the remaining terms. 
So if the odd numbers are removed from the sequence, calculate the sum of the remaining terms. What do they want us to do? What do we have to do here? Okay, so Tahir says we have to do a sum to n. Okay, fine. I see you saying n over 2a plus l. Interesting. What would l be, Tahir? Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Good job. Well done. I disagree with your value for n, though. I agree with your A and I agree with your L, but I disagree with your N. Think about it, Tahir. What would your N be equal to? Okay, there we go. All right, perfect. Okay, so Tahir, off you go. Go do your thing. It's fine. Everybody else. What do they want us to do here? If they want us to remove the odd numbers from the sequence, what do they actually want us to calculate? If they want us to take out the odd numbers, what do you notice about our pattern? It goes even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd blah, 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 all the way to the end, right? So what could you say about our, our particular pattern in terms of even and odd matrix? Yeah, take out the even terms, quite right. Okay, so removing the odd numbers means calculating the sum of the even numbers. Does that make sense to everybody? So if the odd numbers are removed from the sequence, calculate the sum of the remaining terms, they're actually telling us to calculate the sum of the even terms. Does that make sense to everybody? So calculate the sum of the even terms. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. So like term, yeah, exactly. But in this case, Mr. Bavuma, it's not term two, term three, term four, term whatever. It's actually, it's actually term one. Term one is even and term two is odd and term three is even and term four is odd. So what they actually want us to do is they want us to add term one, and term three and term four all the way up to term yeah okay all the way up to term 27 which in this case would be equal to 98 does that make sense there's two ways you could answer this question this is a long way where you could calculate the total sum of all the terms minus the sum of the odd terms or you can just calculate the sum of the even terms, which would be a lot easier. So the even terms, term one starts at 20, all right? The next even term is 26. So, so it starts at 20, then it's 26. So that would be term number one, that would be term number two. What would the last term be? So 101 is the last odd term, but what would the last even term be? Ah, 98 indeed. Okay, so that would be 98. And term number what would that be? Term what is that? Yes, it's 98. Not 27, Kulani. Remember, we're just finding the sum of the even terms. Are there 27 terms in this pattern? Yeah, there we go, Tyler. 
Okay, yes, it would be 14, wouldn't it? Because half of the terms are odd and the other half are even. So if there's 28 terms, 14 are odd and 14 are even. Quite right. Good job, everybody. Okay, so term 14, the nth term would be 98. So now, how are we going to find the sum of these remaining terms? What formula should we use? What's the correct formula in this case? What's the correct formula? Calculating the sum. What sort of sum are we doing? Are we doing an arithmetic sum? Are we doing a geometric sum? What sort of sum are we doing? Yeah, we're doing an arithmetic sum, quite right. That's it, can you see there? Okay, so we are doing a sum to n terms. So n over two times two a plus n minus one d, quite right. That's exactly it. Okay, so if they want us to calculate the sum of the remaining terms, that is an instruction to us to calculate Sn. So that means that we need to know N, we need to know A, we need to know D in order to be able to answer our question. So what is N equal to in this case? No, no, it does. It does work like that. That's exactly how it works. Our difference is six, yes. Because our first term is 20, our second term is 26, our next term would be 32. So quite right, Mr. Bavuma, our difference is six. What's our A value? Okay, so Sepulkazi, why are there 14 terms? Okay, so let's go back, just hang on a second, let's go back and have a look. Okay, look at your pattern, 20, 23, 26, 29, Da, 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 all the way up to 101. Do you remember when we calculated the number of terms in the sequence in 3.2.1, we calculated that there were 28 terms in the pattern. Remember that? So 28 terms in the pattern. So, if there were two, so that's an even number of terms. Okay, go back and look at the pattern. It starts with an even number and it ends with an odd number. So that means there are the same number of even terms as there are odd terms. Does that make sense, Sipokazi? There are the same number of even terms as there are odd terms. So half are even and half are odd. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So if there are 28 terms in total, 14 of them are even, 14 of them are odd. Does that make sense? Yes, can you see it? Yes. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, so half are even, half are odd. That's why we're doing it. Sum to 14. Okay, so this would give us sum to 14 is, let me just change my pen, is 14 over 2, 2a, so a would be 20 plus 28 minus, oh no, sorry, 14, beg your pardon, 14 minus 1, and your difference is 6. Okay, so pop that into your calculator. What do you get? You guys getting the same answer that Camille put up? What are you guys getting? Oh, 
Okay, so point shape what we're doing is we are subbing into our SN formula for our arithmetic pattern. We've worked out that there are 14 terms in the pattern. A is 20 and our difference is 6. So we're subbing into our SN formula for an arithmetic pattern and we're working out what our SN is. That's what the question asked us for. So they wanted us to calculate the sum of the remaining numbers once the odd numbers had been removed. Okay, so if the odd numbers are removed, they want us to calculate the sum of, so you, eight, six, sorry, eight, two, six. Yeah, that's it, eight, two, six is correct. Okay, good job, everybody. Okay, 826 is the correct answer. 826. There we go. Okay, good stuff. All right, so we've calculated some of the even terms because they wanted us to calculate the sum when the odd terms are removed. Can you see that you've got your hand up? Do you want to ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Can we look through it? How did we get 826? Okay, so can you see there, on your calculator, you're going to go 14 over 2 times 2 times 20 plus oh. 14 minus 1 times 6. Okay, my girl? Yes, ma'am. I got the formula confused. Oh, that's I okay. Can you see that? <laughs> that's okay. Okay, so that's where it came from. You happy with it? Can you see those are making sense? Good. Okay. All right. Lovely. Okay. So let's see if we can fit in these last couple of questions before our time runs out. Can you believe it? Our time's nearly up. It goes by so fast, doesn't it? All right. So now, question 3.3 matrix, they're telling us the first and second terms of a geometric sequence are 1, 21 and 1, 331 respectively. So that's term one and term two. Now they want us to calculate the 12th term of the sequence. Zinle, I'm sure Nelis will be able to tell you where you can get our recordings from. Everything is recorded and put onto the net. Okay, so calculating the 12th term of the sequence, because it is a geometric sequence matrix, what formula are they asking us to use? What formula do they want from us? Is it a TN? Is it is an SN? What formula on our formula sheet? It's a TN, quite right to hear. Okay, it's a TN formula. So in, let's just get this down. 3.3.1 TN for a geometric sequence is AR to the N minus one. What does A represent to here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so T, Number one. Okay, what does R represent? Can you see there? What does R represent in your TN formula for a geometric pattern? Your? That's it. Not, not difference, Kaza. Not difference. There's not a constant difference. There is a constant. That's it, Mr. Bavuma. Okay, there is a constant ratio okay not a difference okay difference means something minus something is the same a constant ratio means something divided by something else is the same all right so there's not a constant difference there's a constant ratio okay n is always the number of terms so in other words that is our input value and TN, guys, is always our nth term. 
which is our output. Okay, so in this particular question, they have asked us to calculate the 12th term of the sequence. So in other words, what they want from us is T12. So now we know that N is 12. How do we know what A is? How do we know what R is? What is A equal to? A equals, yes, Sinclair. What is A equal matrix? That's it, can you see there? A is equal to one comma two one. How would we work out what R is equal to? Someone did it and put it in the chat. How would we work out what R was equal to? That's it to here, okay. So term two divided by term one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so R is term two divided by term one. So in this case, one comma, I think it was three, three, one. One comma, three, three, one divided by one comma, two, one, which was one comma, one, hundred percent. Okay, so one comma one to the power of 12 minus one. Okay, so when we work that out, what do we get? Term 12 is? What do you get for term 12 matrix? Yep. Me too, boy, cheer, Paul. Three, comma, four, five. Well done. Hundred percent. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Now, last question. Okay, this could be the last thing we're going to be able to calculate the sum of the first fifteen terms of the sequence. Calculate the sum of the first 15 terms of the sequence. So what formula do they want us to use, Matrix? The sum of the first 15 terms of the sequence. They want us to use the SN formula. Quite right, but SN for a geometric pattern. Yes, okay, so SN for a geometric pattern. So SN equals a to the r n minus one over r minus one that's what they want us to do okay so the sum of the first 15 terms a is one comma two one we know what r is it was one comma one to the power of 15 minus one all over r minus one so that would be one comma one minus one what are you guys getting as an answer the sum of the first 15 terms <coughs> Yes, Cynthia, I think you will. All right, so we don't know what they're going to ask us in our finals. Um, so, yeah, we must learn all the proofs. Okay, yeah, they could, they could ask us that. Not very common, not very common at all, but they could ask it. Yeah, definitely. All right. Mr. Babuma, Kulani, Boichepo, Sipokazi, Kanisile. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Okay, me too. I know, Zinle, it's not, it's not good news. I'm sorry. But you know, proofs are like that. It's just stuff that you have to learn and then regurgitate onto the page. 
Okay, and it, it is worth it because it's it's like five or six marks that you get for nothing, just from learning something and regurgitating it. So yeah, it's worth it.